OK, so given that we went through your role, and you all are supposed to be where you're supposed to be, that's a good sign. You're here to take Digital Tools for Designers, which is Archie 135 for the fall of 2017 semester. So that means I get you for the next 18 weeks, which is a good thing, because we have a lot of ground to cover. So um, this is my pride and joy class. I love this class. It's fun. It was the class that I was originally hired, shockingly, 10 years ago to teach. First time I ever taught this was in the fall of 2007. And so I'm still here, and I'm still teaching it. So I must love it. A little bit about me, just so you know, a uh, lot of new faces. Some of you I've talked to before. Some of you I've substituted for before, so you've interacted with me. Uh, but for those of you that don't know me or have never taken a class here, how many people are, this is like the first class ever at DVC? A couple of you. Welcome. Okay. For the rest of you, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're taking my, my class. Um, I am an associate professor of architecture here at DVC, which means that I am here as a part-time instructor, which translates to I'm here on Mondays and Wednesdays. So if you look for me any other day of the week, I won't be here. But I am here pretty much all day on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, though I, um, I tend to leave at between 2 and 3 on Mondays. I stay until 5 or more on Wednesdays, so that's my later day. I also get here in the morning about 6.30. So if anybody's an early morning person and wants to come in, you're more than welcome to. I open the lab, et cetera. So I throw that out there. Most of the time, people don't come, but it's there, OK? Uh, my email address is gadams at dvc.edu. I also give you a phone number. You can text me here, or you can call me. Um, in all likelihood, I probably won't answer if you call me. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? But if you text me, I try to be responsive. I do work. I do have a job outside of this that I do. I do primarily property management. I have a general contractor's license. So I have an other side of me that is very all-consuming, and I'm busy with that. Um, but I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. So it's always worth, if you're, if, if you're, if you're stuck somewhere and you just need uh, you know, a little help or whatever, shoot me a text, and maybe I can get you unstuck, and you can keep working. Okay. Uh, my office hours are Mondays, 7 to 8 a.m., and Wednesdays, three to f uh, 2 to 3 p.m. The reason that they're split is I teach two classes back to back. You guys are here in 135. Actually, I have a few of you in back to back sessions, so you get me a really long time. Um, <laughs> first class is uh, 8 to 11. My second class is 11 to 2. So I can't have an office hour after this class. So I do one before on Mondays, and I do one after on Wednesdays. Doesn't matter which one you come to. If you want to talk to me, talk to me. Okay? Chances are, if you can't make one of those times, we can make something else work, too. So if you need me, I'm here for you. So there is a course website for this class. Some of you have seen it before. Uh, I had it up a little bit earlier. It's digitaltoolsforarchitects.com, though technically because this is now deemed the Digital Tools for Designers class, you could go to digitaltoolsfordesigners.com, but it would get you to the same place. Okay? This is different from the um, Canvas system that you guys use in other classes. This is completely independent. It's not connected to that in any way. Uh, it's a website that I use for this class, but there's also a bunch of people that are members of it uh, internationally that use it too. So it's not just you guys, um, but you guys will, will use it predominantly. You'll post your work to it. I put lots of things on it. So every one of your exercises, you'll get an exercise handout today for what we start with today. Um, but every one of your exercises is there written up. There's cross links to tutorials and videos and just like all kinds of things for you guys to be able to, to use as your references, which is important. There is a course calendar that goes through and tells what we're going to do Nice. It's a first day, right? We have to have a little screwiness. Uh, so if there's a course calendar that tells us when we're going to do what we're going to do, there will also be assignments posted when they're going to do be due, when I hand them out, that sort of thing. Those are not there yet because I haven't determined exactly what days uh, you're going to get your, your assignments and when they're going to be due. Tutorials, videos, lectures, they're all there hopefully, as long as the lecture recordings work. The good news is if something doesn't work, chances are the lecture from last semester is still relevant to the lecture. Sometimes I change little things along the way. Um, you will also need to comment on other students' work. And I'll go into all of these in a little bit more detail as we go forward in this. 
This is what it looks like. But we'll go through it. So the schedule for the class, you will be here on Monday and Wednesdays in the morning at 8. Generally, I'll lecture for the first, let's call it 50 minutes. Maybe it's an hour. Maybe it's an hour and 20 minutes. Maybe it's 40 minutes. Maybe it's 30 minutes. It depends on what we're talking about. Um, sometimes you just need more lab time. And so I vary the schedule a little bit depending on what it is that you need. It is, once we tack on the two hours of lab time, a pretty long class. You're with me for three hours. Chances are you're going to need a break at some point. I try to build in a break, if I can, between lecture and lab, about 10 minutes. That's your time to like quick run and get coffee and wake up. Okay, So we try to build that in. This is, however, a college class. I treat it like a college class. So if you need to go to the bathroom, just go. Don't ask me. Right? If you need to step outside to get a drink because you're dying, what, go, go do it. Right? It is what it is, especially when we get into lab time. Okay, Would it be a little awkward if I was up here talking and you left? Yeah, probably. So try not to do that. But it's generally, once I'm done talking, if you need to leave, you need to go to the bathroom, do any of that kind of stuff, just go for it. It's lab time. You manage your time. Wisely, I already talked about office hours. My office is ET104B, which is right through that hallway there. If I'm not in here, I'll be in there, or vice versa. Okay. What are we going to talk about in this class? What are you going to learn? So this is primarily a skills class. We're going to learn software. We're going to learn how to manipulate software so that you are prepared for your other classes. How many people are in another architecture class right now? How many people are in an industrial design class? Right now. Okay? This is mixed. This class is mixed. There's some architecture students, there's some industrial design students. The stuff that I'm talking about will apply to both. And that's obviously the point. If you're in another class, the things that we talk about in here will help you in one of those other classes. And I will reference those other classes. Obviously, I know who the teachers are, I know the ty types of assignments you tend to get, and there'll be a lot of overlap. Uh, and that's on, that's on purpose. So we're going to cover. Uh, Adobe Photoshop first. That is very much in the realm of digital photography, but will also work a lot in the world of collage. How do you take something from one photograph and put it into another? And this is particularly relevant when you're doing mock-ups for industrial design or you're trying to do little um, renderings or, or ideas in architecture. You want to take people from one photo, cut them out, put them in another photo, and make it look like they belong and not that they're sticking out. And so I'm going to teach you how to do that. That's all in Photoshop. We will split the Photoshop session in this class. We'll do it first for about two and a half weeks, three weeks. Then we'll do a bunch more at the end. And it just works better because you need more skills in the middle. We also do Adobe Illustrator. So you see that there's a lot of Adobe products here. We're going to do Adobe Illustrator, which is the graphic design layout application built by Adobe. It's for posters layout boards, that sort of thing. You guys, when I talked to you guys in industrial design last year, we did the final layout in Illustrator, which was awful. We're going to teach you to use InDesign instead. Much better product. Okay, So that's what we're going to use for our graphic design. Then we will do a little bit of AutoCAD. And I fought and fought and fought for this in this class. Um, and I think it's, it's particularly relevant to kind of get your feet wet with it. And so we're going to talk about some of the basics of AutoCAD. We'll do a little bit uh, of AutoCAD work. You will actually design a little cabin uh, and that sort of thing. Then we'll move into SketchUp, which is your basic 3D modeling program. A lot of you are probably already familiar with or have at least opened up SketchUp. For me, however, it's not so much about learning to model well in SketchUp, because all of you can probably do that already. It's about how do you take SketchUp stuff and make it look good? Because SketchUp by itself never looks good. So we're going to take SketchUp, and we're going to bring it into Photoshop. We're going to collage over the top of it. And we're going to kind of work between the programs. So everything in this class builds on everything else. So we do a little bit. Uh, we start with Photoshop. We deal with post-processing images, making our image quality better. Then we move into graphic design. And you should be using all the things that we talked about in Photoshop to make your images better when you put them into your InDesign file to make your final layout. So all of these things build on each other. It's not like you can just, oh, we finished Photoshop. I'm going to forget about it. It's definitely about building on top of itself. There is a book for this class. It's the Digital Tools for Architects Handbook. It's right here. I just updated it over the summer. So we've got fresh stuff. Those of you that were in industrial design, the very last bit 
is the stuff we did in your class last year. And so I talk about that. You guys will remember that. It's right there. So it's fresh off the press. It is not available in the bookstore. It's an online publisher. They print it when you order it. That's how it works. Okay. By all means, do a search for the, the publisher is Lulu. Do a search for coupon codes and see if you can get free shipping or you know, some discount or whatever. Okay? It's always worth it. This is the same book that you will use for 135. And if you choose to use one to take 136, which I of course hope you do, you'll use the same book for both. Okay? This is particularly useful for you when I go through complex steps on the computer. So when we're doing illustrator clipping masks, for example, it's really hard to get it right. And so if you go into the book and you reference the Illustrator clipping mask section here, right? Here's live paint. Of course, I can't find it, but anyway, we'll get to it. If you reference what's in here and you make little notes, it'll be a lot easier for you. Okay, so I try very hard in this class to hit you over the head. You have it in print form. You can hear me talk about it. I post the lectures on YouTube. I want you to learn the stuff. That's the idea. Okay, So that's the book. It's available at lulu.com spotlight DTFA. There's also a recommended textbook. And it's, this is not something that's required for the class because we only really reference this in the graphic layout section. This is very much about how do you lay out a board, how do you make it look good, how do you organize your content, and that sort of thing. So it's not something that carries through the class, but we're in that two week, two and a half week period of graphic design, maybe three weeks. This is a really good go-to guide. So it's there as an option. The good news about architecture classes is you're not stuck with the $200 chemistry book, right? You get to like spend money on pencils and like stuff like that, it's great. Right? Modeling supplies. Well, in this class, there's not too much modeling supplies that you're going to need to buy. So if you've got an extra 30 bucks or so, maybe you can find it used. It's not a bad reference for you to have. So the all-important grading question. How do you get your grades in this class? There's four things that make up your grade. The first part is your lab exercise. And I'll talk about what each of these mean in subsequent slides. So I'm not going to go too into them too much. Those lab exercises are worth 20%. You have assignments in this class. Collectively, all of the assignments, there'll be six or seven assignments. I always vary it a little bit depending on your pace and that sort of thing. Those are worth 40% of your overall grade, so about 6% each of your overall grade. Then we get to a final portfolio, which is worth 30% of your grade. You turn that in on the last day, and then eat a donut. Good plan. Then we have participation, which is worth 10% of your grade. Like I said, I'll talk about what each of these mean in a little bit. The other thing that's important for those of you that are in a studio class right now, in 121 or something like that, is that this class, I try really hard to make it a consistent workload. It's not going to be like a studio class where all of a sudden I've got a review coming and I just have to like drop everything else and, and just work on that. If you stay here, if you come to class, if you work in class, you should get the bulk of your stuff done. That's the idea. It's meant to complement a studio class, not be a studio class. And I think that's important for you to know. So let's talk about each of these in depth. We'll start with exercises. So like I said, an exercise is worth 20% of your overall grade for the class. And there's maybe 31, 32 total exercises. So if you do the math, they're like 3% each or whatever. They're not worth much each. The other thing that's important about an exercise is it is graded on a pass, not pass basis. You do it, you get credit. You don't do it, you get a zero. Real simple. Do it. Right? It is entirely possible over the course of the semester that you will be absent a day or two. If you're absent a day or two, still do the work. It's all online. It's still posted. You can do it on your own time. Okay? The other thing that happens is at least, I'd say, 75% of you at some point in the semester will forget to post one of the things that you're working on. You work really hard on it. You're here the whole time. And you just like, oh, I got to rush off to a doctor's appointment. And you forget to post it. And then go, a couple weeks go by, and you've still forgotten to post it, and then it's there. You get a grade sheet back from me, and suddenly there's a zero there. Okay? I know you've just forgot to post it. You did it. So you just go back, post it, and it'll be fine. Okay? They are meant for you to experiment. They're meant for you to try things out. They're meant for you to learn, which is why they're a pass-not-pass -pass system. If you 
try something and it really doesn't work or it's really ugly or you pick the wrong colors or whatever, that's okay. You still get credit for it. There's a reason we have exercises to learn the skills and assignments to test how well you use the skills. This is about learning the skills. They're generally due at the end of the lab period on the day that they're assigned. So today, you'll have an exercise to do. It'll be exercise 101. You'll go through, you'll do your exercise, you'll make your post, you're done. Generally speaking, well, certainly today it won't take the full time for you to do it. But most of the time, it'll take the full time. You'll finish it, you'll post it at the very end. If you haven't finished it, post it at the end. You'll still get credit for it. The point is that you were here and worked on it the whole time. It might be good for you to keep working on it to finish learning the skill, but you'll still get credit. Okay. So let's move on to assignments. 40% of your overall grade. So this is obviously a much bigger chunk of your overall grade. These are generally larger. They require multiple skills to come together to, to make this assignment work. Um, you're going to be graded on the skills that you use, but also the overall product. You know, if it has color choice involved, for example, I'm picking on color theory for right now, you'll be graded on what colors you chose to use. If we're doing the, the um, lecture series poster, you'll be on, graded on not only were you able to use InDesign and did you create a layout, but how well did you do? Did you create a hierarchy? Is there, is there multiple depths as part of this layout? We'll talk about what all those mean and how you would do that, but that's part of your grade. Okay? You will also get a, a um, grade sheet when typically after you turn in an assignment, it takes me a week to grade them, then you'll get a grade sheet back. That will be your update. I write comments on your grade sheet that tell you exactly what was good and what was not. Okay? So it's meant for you to get feedback on it and learn from it as well. With that being said, it's entirely likely that you will turn something in and it won't be as good as you wanted it to be. Happens. Okay? So you turn something in and you're like, man, I really I wanted an A on this assignment. I got a C. Ooh, that's no good. I would much rather have you learn from your mistakes than punish you for trying something. Okay? So for each assignment, and I regret this sometimes. For each and every assignment that you turn in, not exercise, just assignment, you can submit one regrade. So essentially, I turned in my assignment, I got a C on it, it was really terrible, I want to regrade it. You will turn that in, you can turn it in at any point in the semester if you want, but I will not grade it until the very last day of the semester. So your grade exists as it is with the grade that you got on your original assignment until that last day of the semester. Okay? When I regrade it, I pretend that I never even saw your original. You get a brand new grade. It's fair for your grade to go up, and it's fair for your grade to go down. It's also fair for your grade to stay the same. Okay? But remember, it's not referencing your original work. It's a fresh shot at it. Okay? It's really important to understand that. Sometimes it helps people out. Rarely does it hurt people. But if you intend to regrade something or submit a regrade for it, do it not at the end of the semester. Do it as you go along. Because otherwise, you'll get to the end and you won't have time. Because you'll be in 121 and you'll be freaking out and tearing your hair out and all that kind of stuff. OK? So do it as you go along. But like I said, it won't show up on your grade sheet until the very end. It also unburdens my work. You guys know that in, at DVC, you can't get A minuses or A pluses or any of that kind of stuff. You get an A, a B, a C, a D. Right? It's just straight grade. So if you have an A after I've done your final grade, I'm not going to go through and look at your regrades because it's not going to change your grade. Does that make sense? But if you have a B, I'll go back and look at them, and I'll bump your grade up if you did a better job. Does that make sense for everybody? OK. Overall A or A for the assignment? In that context, I was talking about an overall A. So, so if you got. I don't know that I've ever had somebody who got an A do a redo, a resubmit. But I guess it's theoretically possible. So if you got a 92% on your assignment, and you fixed it, and you got a, and I gave you a 94%, that would be like a tenth of a percentage point of your overall grade. Like I don't think it's worth your overall effort in that. So generally, it's when you got a B, you want to improve to an A. You got a C, you want to improve to an A, that kind of thing. OK. So then. 
comes the final portfolio. This is the showcase piece of the class. It is the final project. And as such, there isn't like a test at the end. I don't sit you down and say, we're going to do illustrator clipping masks, and I'm going to time you. That doesn't work. So at the end, we're going to have a final portfolio that is due. This is the one time you will hand me a printed thing. Okay, So it's a physical object. This is 30% of your overall grade. So if you add all the stuff up, going into the final, you only have 70% of your grade. So if you tank the final portfolio, your grade will go down. Somehow people fail to, to register this fact. So I try to hit you over this very early. Okay? If you wait until the last minute, your portfolio won't be very good. I promise you. It's really obvious, the good portfolios and the ones that were rushed. It's really obvious. It is something that is showcasing your work. It's showcasing your skills. And therefore, it is something that you should be doing as you go along in the class. It's also something for you to do, not something we will sit down and do together, because it's a test of your skills. It's a final exam for the class. Make sense? There will be two or three days in the semester where I will focus on your portfolios. And we will sit down and we will talk about it. If we can, there we go. And we'll go through specific things. I am also here and available during office hours at any point, especially toward the end of the semester, to sit down with you and go over it and talk about what's working and what's not working. Okay? I also have a, hold on one second for your question. I also have a bunch of portfolios that people have done in previous semesters. I used to just bring them all out. Now I only bring the good ones out. So I'll bring the good ones out, um, which is essentially ones that got high Bs and low As and some high As. Um, and I'll bring those out so you can look at them. So there'll be samples. Question? Uh, yeah. Um, so the portfolio it shows up obviously throughout the semester. Should we also show our homework and our recreated work included in the portfolio? Portfolio is not necessarily a progress report. What it is is it's a showcase of your absolute best work. So if, for example, and I'm going to use the architectural example because that's what I'm, I'm more familiar with. Um, so I finished my undergrad degree. And I want to go on to grad school at Berkeley. Okay, top tier architecture program. The thing that they're going to ask me for, in addition to my personal statement and all the normal application stuff, is a portfolio of my work. Okay, obviously, you guys aren't applying to grad school, so you don't have that work just yet. But that portfolio of your work is really what tells those people, the, you know, the admittance people, who you are, what you do, and how good you are at what you do. So it's very much about you and showcasing yourself. So you don't want to put bad stuff in it. You want to put your best stuff in it. And that's what you're going to focus on. And so I'm going to help you cull through and whatever. For this particular portfolio, and again, we'll talk about this. You'll get handouts about it, uh, et cetera, as we go forward. Am I like touching something? <laughs> Stand back. Don't touch. Um, We'll go through it. I'll give you handouts. I'll give you specific guidelines and, and how we're going to set it up. In this particular one, you have to include your work from this class, but you're welcome to include work from other class. I am not under any illusions, however, that when you go to apply for the job next summer and you show some of your portfolio, you might want to cut a little of this class out. Right? That's, that's OK, and I understand that. But we'll talk a lot more about it. Okay? But I like to at least introduce this. This is where we're going. This is what you will have at the end. Okay? By the way, for the industrial design students, this will be tailored more your direction than it will be architecturally as well. So you'll be prepared to. Course participation. This is actually really important. And it's something that people sometimes leave to the end and don't really understand why I make you do it. Right? And I don't think I have anybody who was in a 136 class with me before. I don't think I recognize anybody. Okay, This is the thing that can really bring your grade down. And that's participation. So in this class, after almost every exercise, there's a few that I will not make you do. Okay? But after almost every exercise, you are going to be required to write three constructive comments to your friends, to your neighbors, about their work. Okay? When you do an assignment, same thing. Three constructive comments about each assignment. The reason that I make you do this is the design world is filled with critique, response, stuff. 
Okay? You go and you do a presentation somewhere. You, you work on a particular architectural project. You sit down with your client. You have to present it. You have to take criticism. They say, I don't want this. You have to figure out how to handle that. The other thing that's really important for you as a student is to learn and figure out how to articulate why something is bad or why something is really good. So when I tell you to do one of these comments, I do not want you to sit down and say, it's really pretty. I love it. Is that a constructive comment? No, not at all. Okay? So those kinds of comments don't mean anything. What I want you to do is I want you to look at it and say the graphic composition technique that you used, setting the, you know, the person at a third of the way over on the page with them looking a certain direction, is really working nicely for your photograph. Maybe it's the post-processing that you used on your photograph really brought out the shadows in your, your image, and you did a nice job working on that. That's constructive. Maybe it's you know, your color choice in this Charlie Harper image is just not quite there. I think I'd go back and revisit which colors you chose. It's constructive feedback. And you'll notice this, right? You're in 121. How many people are in 121 this semester? Okay. So you're going to sit down, you're going to work on your project, and at the end of your project, you're going to have a review on your project. Okay? And you're going to sit down, and there's going to be some people coming in, right? Some people like me that are instructors, some people that are from the outside world, right? And they're going to sit down, and they're going to tell you why your project is crap. Well, maybe not. Maybe you're, why your project is good. Chances are it's why your project is bad. But it is what it is. Now, if they just came in and they said, ah, oh, this is just awful. See you later. Would that help? No, it wouldn't help at all. So it's their job as a critic to come in and try to help you become a better person, to help you become a better designer, to help you understand what's working and what's not working. And so this process of critique is absolutely critical. You need to find your own voice. You need to find your own way of doing that. And that's why I make you do this. So it might seem like, oh man, he's making me do more comments. Right? That's not the purpose. It's about how do you articulate your thoughts. And you'll learn a lot from doing this. OK, so here's the strategy for doing this. Because if you get behind, you get way behind. And then it's like, oh my god, i got to sit down for like 10 hours and write comments. And I don't have time for this. Okay, So what you do is typically on every lecture, I start lecture about 10 minutes late. I'm still a holdover from Berkeley. Like they start 10 minutes late. I feel like I should start 10 minutes late. It is what it is. So you walk into class at 8, 8.02, 8.04, no later. Right? And you'll sit down and you'll turn your computer on. You'll log into the website. And the first thing that you're going to do is comment on what happened last class. You write your three comments. Some days you might have to write six because people turned in an assignment last class. If you sit down and you do it every day, it's just part of your routine, it's easy. You stay up to date, you've written your comments, life is good. So I will remind you at the beginning of the semester, hey, guess what, guys? It's time to do your comments. Don't forget. Right? But as the semester goes on, it's, it's on you. Okay? So. We kind of went through that. This is worth half of your participation grade for the class. So 5% of your overall grade is making comments. It's actually a lot. It tells you how important it is. OK. Materials. So in this class, you have to have some place to store your work. Anybody worked in these labs before? Probably a fair number of you. Okay. What happens, those of you that have worked in here, if the power goes off? Right? It's not a good thing because these computers wipe themselves whenever you turn them off. Okay? Nothing saves on them. So you have to store your work somewhere. Flash drives are great. Okay? I'd say 32 gigs or larger, realistically. That's what I suggest. Um, some people have moved into the realm of hard drives. Certainly, if you're in my 136 class, we have big material libraries. Rhino files can get really big, so having a little extra space is not a bad thing. Okay? Um, 
the other thing that I will talk you through is because we're updated to Windows 10 on these computers, we can use the Microsoft OneDrive. You guys all have a OneDrive account anyway because you have your school account. So I think you get 25 gigs for free, decent storage. We can set that up such that it points to your flash drive so it backs up your flash drive as you go along. So you've got double backups and we'll talk through that next class anyway. Okay. So a lot of you might want to use OneDrive in addition to a flash drive or a hard drive. Okay. The thing about flash drives is that they go in your pocket, and then you take your pants off, and their pants go in the wash. How many people have done that before? Oh, mine have gone through the wash a ton. Okay. Sometimes they survive. Notice I said sometimes. Okay. So. You have to be really careful. I actually recommend for a lot of you guys to attach it to your key ring because it's really hard to lose your keys because you won't be able to leave DVC if you can't find your keys. Okay? So chances are your keys aren't going to go through the wash because you'll take them out when you get home. And it's attached so you can't like lose it. So it's not a bad idea. Those of you that move into hard drives, it's unlikely your hard drive is going to sit in your pocket and go through the wash. Okay? But they can fail too. You know, it could fly out your truck window or something. I don't know. Right? We'll talk about that kind of stuff next class. Okay? So you can't store anything on lab computers because if they restart, they wipe. Uh, let's see. Safeguard your flash drive. We went through that. A digital camera is not a bad thing for this class. Some of you have like digital SLR cameras or higher end cameras. If you can, use that. If you don't, chances are everybody has a really good phone with a really good camera in it. Right? The funny thing is, when I started teaching this 10 years ago in 2007, right, I think the iPhone had just come out, like the original iPhone. Right? So people were, were, at that point, were like, can I use my camera phone? You know, my phone, on my, you know, it's like a Motorola Razr camera. And it would like, be blurry. And, I mean, it's, no, you can't. Now, cameras are great. So you can, use, you can certainly use that. Um, but if you have a fancier camera, no reason not to use a fancier camera as well. Okay? But it's not required. Attendance. So attendance in this class is absolutely mandatory. Okay? You have to be here. This is not an online class. You have to be here. That's just the way it works. Okay? I do post almost all, assuming there's no lecture recording errors, my lectures on YouTube. So you can go back and watch it. If you happen to be gone a day, you will lose some of your participation for the class. But you can still watch the lecture afterward. Okay? I don't want you to be permanently behind. OK? Um, 810 is when I start. You have to be here sitting down with your computer on to be considered on time. If you roll in at 815, you'll be marked late. OK? So I have a whole way that this, this works in the grade sheet where you lose percentage off. You know, it's not a full day. It's not like you were absent for the full day, but you lose something for being late and whatever. It'll make sense when you get your first grade sheet. You can't leave class early. You have to stay here for the full time which is really hard. Today, you can leave early. Okay? But generally speaking, you have to stay here for the whole class. Some of you will breeze through certain sections. Okay? How many people have used Photoshop before? Okay? Fair number of you. So those of you that have used Photoshop before, Photoshop may be easy. You may finish your work early. That's OK. Right? That's good for you. Either keep trying and experimenting with new things, or work on work from another class. Believe it or not, especially those of you that are in 121, you always have something to do. Okay? Even if you don't think you do, you do. So you'll sit, keep working, right? and you're, you're free to go when class is over. Remember, class ends 10 minutes before it says it's over. So in your case, class ends at 10.50. So you're free to go. Make sense? Yeah? OK. Um, your attendance counts for 5% of your overall grade. A couple little quick notes that aren't on the slides about how I do attendance, okay, just so you, you know. In order to make it lively, right, I don't take attendance necessarily at the beginning of every class. I take it at some random point in the middle of class. And that means that people have to stick around. Sometimes they take it at the end. Sometimes they take it at the beginning. It is what it is. Okay? You won't ever know when I do it. If you happen to be on your break, you go to the bathroom, whatever. I will pick you up when you come back in. Okay, it's not that hard for me to, to, you know, in the beginning I don't know all of you, but it won't take too long, and I'll know all of you. So when you come back in, I'll mark you, and it's no big deal. Generally, I know who's here and who's not here. Okay, so if you walk in late, same kind of thing. 
right? I'll pick you up as you walk in late, and I'll mark you late on the attendance sheet. Okay? Every once in a while, I'll make a mistake. We'll talk through it if I make a mistake. I doubt it. Okay? So that's kind of how it works. Be aware that that's how it works. In this class, we will have assigned seats. Next class, we have assigned seats. So if you really, really want a particular seat, we're creatures of habit. You've been in this room before. You want that seat. Get here early next class, and that'll be your seat. Okay? So you pick your own seats. I'm not going to assign them for you. You pick your own seats, but that will then be your seat for the rest of the semester. And that's part of how I can do the role really easily. Make sense? OK. So let's continue. I know this is all like totally boring stuff. We'll get to the good stuff next class, I promise. General guidelines. Okay, If you miss two weeks, which would be four days of class, I may withdraw you from the class. It's my discretion. I can choose to or not. Generally, we have to sit down and have a meeting, and you have to explain why you've been gone so much. Okay. Um, the other thing is that if you are not going to be here, you have a doctor's appointment, right? you're in Hawaii, take me with you and you won't lose points. No, if you're not going to be here, please email me or text me before that day saying, I'm not going to be here. And that means I'm not sitting around waiting for you to be here. Right? It's really hard if people stroll in late because I want the right number. I don't want to start talking and then have to repeat myself. Okay, so you have to be here on time, but if you're not going to be here, just send me a text. Say, I'm not going to be here. Okay? It's not hard. It's also part of respect. Okay? Let's say you have a job. Okay? A lot of you have jobs. What would happen if you didn't tell your boss that you weren't coming to work? What do you think? Probably get fired, right? Same thing here. Tell boss I'm not going to be there. The good news is I'm more lenient than your boss. Your boss probably would fire you. I'd say, like, OK. OK? So it's important. Let me know if you're not going to be here. OK. Yeah, you also get some credit. I told you I have a complicated spreadsheet that, it, that gives you this percentage point. You get a little bit of credit back if you give me a notice. So I reward you. OK. If you don't complete your work, guess what? You're not going to do well in the class. Shocking. OK? So. You might be dropped, or you might receive an F. Okay? I like to, to put this out. And I know this is it's terrible. On the first day, it's 8 AM, first day of class, and here's this guy sitting up here talking about doom and gloom. Okay? But I have to warn you guys about this. I believe very strongly that this is a college class. I treat you like adults. You treat me like adults. You should want to be here. That's why we teach the class in the first place. Okay? I hope you do. And I hope by the end of the semester you want to take my next class because you like being here. Okay? That being said, you're responsible for yourself. And I think at DVC in general, there's way too much hand-holding. Okay? If you move on to Berkeley or Cal Poly, there is not going to be somebody holding your hand saying you should drop this class. Right? They're going to just be like, yeah, whatever. I don't care about him. F. Right? So if you're thinking, I'm not doing well, drop yourself. Don't rely on me to drop you. Does that make sense? Okay. So be responsible. Let me know if you're not coming. Drop yourself if you're not doing well. Right? The good news is you can withdraw and take it again. It is what it is. Okay. You're adults. I'll treat you like that. You treat me like that. Life is good. Fair enough? OK, enough doom and gloom. I'm sorry. I just have to like beat you over the head with it in the beginning. OK, so due dates for your assignments. I'll announce them in class. We'll talk about them. I'll hand you the, the sheet that talks about what you're going to do. It should be totally self-explanatory. They'll be on the course calendar, too. Um, assignments, not your exercise. Exercises due at the end. Assignments are due before class starts, before 8.10. Right, on the day that they're due. So I don't want you rolling in here at 8.09 and trying to post your work. Because then you won't listen to anything that I say because you're trying to post your work and write your comments and whatever. So you have to focus on me. Therefore, it's due before class starts. If you turn it in after class starts or the next day or whatever, it's subject to the late work policy, which I'll talk about in just a second. Okay? Uh, exercise to do at the end. 
there's no late work policy on the exercises. You do it, you get credit. Remember, pass, not pass. Do it, you get credit. So late work. Assignments, I say exercises, yeah, whatever. Okay. Assignments, however, I'm very strict on this. Assignments, if you turn in something to me after 810 on the day that it is due, it will go down by one letter grade per class. So even if you turned it in to me at 811 on the day it was due, and you had an A, it immediately goes to a B. Does that make sense? And I'm really strict on this because in the world of design, we have deadlines. You have to turn something in to the city staff because you're going to go on a design review commission or a planning commission hearing. You have a specific deadline when you have to turn something in before they can publish the report and whatever to give proper notice for the meeting that's going to happen. If you don't turn your stuff in, you don't go on the meeting. It's part of life. So we do the same thing here. It's due. It's very strict. So you can do the math. If it's four days late, you're down in the F range, 50% range-ish. Okay. The good news is if you turn it in regardless after four days late, you will get a cap 50%, which is a whole lot better than a zero. So you better just turn it in. The other thing is you cannot make up for the late penalty when you do a regrade. Okay, so if I, if I turn something one day late and I got a C on it, 10% down, I now have a D on it. I do a regrade and I do A quality work, that 10% still comes off the max grade I can get is a B. Does that make sense? So you can't make up for late work. So if it's 8 AM, if you haven't had enough coffee, here's the trick. Okay? Turn in something on time and do a regrade. Light bulb, right? It's more important to turn it in on time. So don't be late. Just don't ever be late. It's really easy. All right, more general guidelines. So there are 32 of you, and there's one of me. There will be times when you really need to talk to me, and I get that, OK? But instead of doing this, and waiting and waiting, OK? Look to your neighbor. Hey, do you know how to do that clipping mask thing? You might know. And it's a lot better to do that than to fall asleep and waste your time, OK? So ask your neighbors, right? There's a book. There's videos. It's all there. So look at that stuff. That doesn't mean that I don't want to talk to you. I can't wait to sit down and talk to you. I like teaching this stuff, OK? But it takes me a long time to get through everybody. So if everybody's stuck and you're just waiting for me, it's a waste of time. So ask your neighbors, because chances are they might know how to get you unstuck, which is a good plan. OK, so I strongly suggest you take notes in this, because it will help you. There might be a little trick that you don't understand. You put a little note in there, then you go back, you're at home. What did he say? Oh yeah, I remember, and that sort of thing. OK, so I work really hard to record and post every one of my lectures. And there's a lot of them on YouTube by now. Um, if you go to YouTube itself, youtube.com slash digital tools for arch, they're all there. You guys in this class in 135, everything starts with the 100s. So it's exercise 101 today. It's lecture 101. Okay? 136, everything's in the 200s. So you guys just need to focus on the 100s for this class. Okay, they're all posted there, and we'll go through them, I'll show them to you. Um, if for some reason I haven't posted today's lecture and you really need to see it, look at the one from last semester, if it's there. Because that might do virtually the same thing. Certainly I change things along the way, but I try to get the same content out there. Okay? Watching the recordings is not the same as being in class. Because if we're in class, you can raise your hand and say, well, wait a minute, I didn't understand that. Can you do that again? If you watch it later, you can't do that. You can't ask me a question. So you do have to be here so that you can ask questions. Um, everything on the in the class is licensed under a Creative Commons license. Share and share alike. If this is something of concern for you, you can talk to me about it. Doesn't really matter. It's just something I have to put in there. I actually, this was probably seven years ago, I had a student who really had issues over rights. And so we talked about it. He still did the class. But this is how it works. Okay. So let's look at some student work from previous semesters. Then we'll take a break. And then we'll do your first exercise. So we'll just flip through a bunch of stuff as we go along. We're going to start in the world of photography. 
I'm going to teach you how to take better pictures, how to do good composition, and that sort of thing, but also how to post-process image, images, how to make good, deep, crisp shadows, right? really bring out colors, that sort of thing. Um, this is also part of learning Photoshop. So like I said, I'm just flipping through. And there's tons and tons of examples. These are older examples. Then we'll get into advanced photo editing, where we take things that don't belong and put them together, uh, which can be very fun. Totally creepy. This is one of the creepiest ones anybody's ever done. I don't know. It's really well done, though. So we'll, we'll go through and we'll talk about uh, you know, how to do this, how to do masking, and all that sort of thing. Um, I love that one. That's one of my favorites. Then we'll get into layout and graphic design. I generally do a lecture series poster, though I haven't decided officially that we're going to do that. Um, but it's about how do you organize stuff on a page. And this is very relevant whenever you're doing a presentation of any kind, is you really have to think about how are you going to organize and make it so that your particular poster is interesting and grabbing, uh, wants people to engage. Then we'll get into some AutoCAD. This is not as spectacular, per se. Uh, it's not a design studio, so we don't focus so much on design. We focus on technique. Um, the idea, though, is that you have a basic understanding of AutoCAD. You also have a basic understanding of how paper space and model space work in conjunction with each other, and consequently, how you can use those for what you're trying to do. You should be able to, to set up your uh, trusses for laser cutting. That's part of it for 121 people. So you should be kind of ready for that sort of thing. Then we'll get into 3D modeling and collage, uh, which is really about how do you build a 3D model? How do you put that particular piece into an environment and make it feel like it's part of that environment? Some of these are better than others. We'll talk about plans and sections and elevations and that sort of thing. That one's a, this one's a nice one, All right? Where we're putting people in and that sort of thing. So I'll end by asking what you will create. And I think this is one of the fun things about this class. So having taught this for 10 years, I can tell you that every semester is different. And it's partly because you guys are here. And you guys are different than the people I had last semester. And that's really cool. And that's part of why I like it and why I'm here teaching you is because I get to interact with different people every semester. And you guys bring different ideas to the table. I get ideas from you. You get ideas from me, I hope. And we all become better. And that's part of, part of this class and part of learning this process. Generally speaking, the semester trajectory is very similar. But I reserve the right to change things or throw different things at you, throw experimental things at you, and whatever. Um, so right now, I don't have any crazy stuff planned, but you never know. I like to vary stuff up, and I get really bored with certain things. Like Charlie Harper is like, I'm so done with that. But I haven't come up with something better yet. So I'm working on it, OK? So we're going to take a break. What do we got? A um, few minutes over today. It's 9.04. Come back at about 9.15, and we'll do your first exercise, OK?